was really not a question of whether we should care for patients with Ebola disease. We, we would. In the summer of 2014, Dr. Bruce Ribner was lead physician for the Serious Communicable Diseases Unit at Emory University Hospital. Near the end of July that year, he got word that an American healthcare worker with Ebola virus disease would be arriving at the hospital in a couple of days from West Africa. July 30th, 2014, everything changed. Um, I happen to remember that because it was my birthday. The hospital had constructed this special intensive care isolation unit in 2001 in collaboration with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It had been used only a few times over the years to care for CDC field personnel with less menacing infections than what Ribner and his team would soon be facing. Folks were nervous. I know I was nervous. We were dealing with something that did not have a cure. Protecting hospital staff, other patients, and the public was paramount concern for the hospital. We had a great deal of confidence that we could do this safely. We could deliver excellent patient care in a way that was safe for our healthcare workers. And if we hadn't felt that way, uh, we probably wouldn't have accepted those patients in the first place. Toward that end, the unit's medical staff was backed up by a sophisticated interdisciplinary enterprise with on-site laboratory pathologists, an environmental services crew, and Emory's Office of Critical Event Preparedness and Response. Amid a storm of media and an anxious public, Dr. Kent Brantley arrived at Emory University Hospital on August 2nd, 2014. He was the first person with Ebola virus disease to ever set foot on American soil. I think we all felt this burden. We brought Ebola to Atlanta, and it was our responsibility to make sure it went no further. You dock yeah. and then into the shower area. Nurse Joe Morgan was the first clinician in the United States to care for an Ebola patient. I just wrote up on the board, you know, welcome home. We're glad you're here. I really wanted him to know that, that this was not only okay with us, that we were, we were glad to bring him in. We wanted to take care of him. On August 5th, Nancy Wrightbull, the second patient with Ebola to be treated in the United States, was admitted to Emory. When Nancy Wrightbull arrived, very different set of circumstances. She came in on a stretcher, and she actually said to Dr. Lyon and I, who were in the room when she arrived, that she thought that she was brought back to the United States so that she could die at home. And Dr. Lyon was like, that's not my impression of why you're here. I'm here to make you better. Like, let's just get this straight from the get-go. For several weeks, the Emory Ebola story remained front page news throughout the world. So the media issue in general, I think, was um, a huge learning curve for all of us on the team. None of us had really interacted to that level with the media. And we do not believe that any healthcare worker, any other patient, or any uh, visitor to our facility is in any way at risk of acquiring this infection. Our, our major mission was number one, to supply excellent medical care safely, but number two, to help educate the American public with all of the media being focused on us, that in fact this was something that we could do safely. After weeks of intensive medical care, Emory's first two Ebola patients began to show signs of improvement. Nancy Wrightbulb was discharged a couple of days before Ken Brantley. Today is a miraculous day. I'm thrilled to be alive, to be well, and to be reunited with my family. When Kent Brantley ended up having a press conference, it was our way of being able to kind of recognize the staff and, and the hospital and the family and everybody who'd worked so hard to get to this point. Thank you to Emory University Hospital and especially to the medical staff in the isolation unit. It was also an opportunity for the world to see that a survivor of Ebola virus disease could literally be embraced. In early September of 2014, Emory's third and sickest patient came to the hospital, Dr. Ian Crozier. When Dr. Crozier arrived, he was already a little on the delirious side. He was really sick. Ian's viral load was probably a log to two logs higher than Kent or Nancy's, which means it's potentially 10,000 times higher. Kent had this press conference where he said, today is a miraculous day, and that's how he started out, and I thought, with Ian, we are not gonna have a today as a miraculous day. Ian perhaps taught us the greatest 
about Ebola virus disease and uh, especially patients who have severe illness with it. Experts here soon realized that advanced intensive care measures such as dialysis and ventilating were not as previously thought fruitless on patients with Ebola virus disease. That, that was one lesson learned that if you can help support um, patients through this very difficult time, keep them alive, it's amazing what, what they can fight through if, you're, if you have the resources to do that. Though the team had initially braced themselves for the worst, Crozier eventually began to take a turn toward recovery. I walked in and he was joking with his brother um, through the intercom system and at that point I knew that he was regaining consciousness and um, that probably his other issues were gonna get better. And he was discharged from the hospital 15 days after that. We don't know how the nurses in, in Dallas got sick. A few days before Ian Crozier's release in mid-October, Emory received its fourth patient, Amber Vincent. She had become infected with Ebola after a man who had traveled to West Africa died at the Dallas hospital where she worked as a nurse. Her disease was less severe than the other patients treated here and was released healthy after a couple of weeks in the unit. I want to sincerely thank the professionals who have contributed to my care here at Emory Healthcare and at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital Dallas. The serious communicable diseases team would go on to advance improved safety protocols and methods of care for patients with serious infections and share their findings with healthcare providers around the country. Emory pathologists, meanwhile, developed more efficient lab techniques for detecting Ebola virus, while infectious disease experts here have played key roles in testing vaccines. In addition, immunologists at Emory Vaccine Center have led studies on Ebola antibodies in an effort to design antiviral therapies and better vaccines. And the team continues to play a lead role in accelerating the learning curve by sharing best practices about bio-preparedness and infection control across the entire healthcare system. Our unit remains on one hour call to take care of any patient with a serious communicable disease anywhere in the world who might need us.